Blake, you are the first guy. So what was it like for you to, to dive into this novel? Enjoying the entire experience, and I tell you, I was maybe 10 pages in, and it got all surreal for me because it really, it became so, you know, because I was in it. Because I was reading it and there were no disturbances, no distractions, I got inside it. Yeah, I really got into it like I was in the, in the movie of the book. And it became very, very eerie, very unsettling. I could picture everywhere. I could picture where we were, what it was doing. I was right there with Lily, you know. In fact, I was Lily for some of it. I. I am, you know, a, a filmmaker. I, I, I did make movies years ago. I, you know, I'm, I'm in that creative zone. So I'd love to see the movie of the life I didn't notice to see how, how, how accurate I was in the imagery. So what was eerie was I'm standing there next to Lily going, oh, getting a little taste of my own medicine here. <laughs> That's literally what it was. It was a humility moment because I just went, uh-huh. That's not very nice when somebody slaps you in the face with your own mortality. And I'm in my 50s, so I've already been through that facing my mortality issue, overcome it, and here I am again going, hmm, maybe I didn't completely overcome it. It's it really made me sit up over the last uh, week or so and take notice of my own life and say, hey, listen, make sure you're practicing what you preach while you're sharing with people because your own vulnerability and your own discovery and your own victory is the biggest thing that will inspire other people to greatness. What do you think, feel that the biggest impact was on you? Honestly, it impacted me on two levels because the story is just a good book. It's, you know, it's, just, it's a great story. And the narrative and all the twists in it, you know, really impacted me. As you know, because when you asked about the interview, I said, okay, I want ground rules of what I can talk about though. Because this book's, you know, there's a potential for a lot of spoilers. Because there's some <laughs> nifty <laughs> twists. There are some nifty, nifty twists in this story. So it impacted me greatly just from the story standpoint, because again, like I said, the whole movie was playing out in my head. And when I closed the cover, I went, we, we, could, we could make a movie of this. We, this would be a good movie. <laughs> for the most part, it was very subtly sprinkled amongst an enjoyable narrative. So you just enjoyed the story, the twists, the relationships. And then suddenly you went, oh, I just, I just got hit with a message. <laughs> oh, but you brought it out in yourself. That was the cool part. You didn't get slapped with the message, the message grew up, bubbled up inside you. And when it hit you in the brain, you you kind of said, I found that. And that was an amazing impact for me on both levels, was how subtle the message was, yet it was profoundly impactful. What is the power of it? My advice to somebody picking this up would be to say, make no mistake, there are answers in this manuscript, but there are no right or wrong answers. So don't go looking for a solution, go looking for inspiration. Go in and find the spirituality that's in it and how it answers you. And because it's so crafted the way it is, you will find it yourself. And so I love the symbolism of train tracks because it's like, what's your choice? Do you want to get on and take the preordained ride because the destination, the preordained destination is fascinating and, and enlightening, but you don't have to. You're walking these tracks, so you can get off anytime you want and go in any direction. Lily does. <laughs> First of all, caveat to fellow dudes, okay? When you read this, the first few pages, you're gonna go, okay, get on with it. Because that's what we are, that's what we're guys, right? Women will settle in and enjoy the narrative, enjoy the exposition of the characters. There's a wonderful couple of relationship things in there. And most guys will be going, oh man, it sounds like there's a love story underneath this. Okay. I think it's more transformational for men than it will be for women. Because there are things explored in this story that women are in touch with, right? It'll help them, it'll expand, it'll grow, it'll build. But for a guy, this is brand new territory. And they've got the safety of the railroad tracks at the beginning, you know, they can stay on the tracks and just kind of look around until they feel safe. But there's explorations in this manuscript that are pretty virgin territory for most men that I know, it's because it's safe territory. There's nothing for, for a guy to be afraid of here. There's no masculinity threats in this, not at all. It's, it's a great story. Um, you know, there's a wonderful, like I said, the twist and the mystery and where there's lots of, there's lots of meat in there for a guy to get, you know, onto. Plus it was written by a guy. You know, it's funny, you, you talk about men and stories and I think one of the things men miss the most, and that's why we don't read, we, we go to the movies more than, you know, is that, like you said, the evolution of man is, is story, but it's, it's cyclical. Stories create our adventures and then our adventures tell our stories and it just keeps going around and when we stop telling the story when we stop embracing the story we'll lose our history we'll lose our future and we'll just be blindly you know 
following the train tracks. No one steps off the tracks without a story and no, there's no story if you don't step off the tracks.